come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, made of different materials. Bridges have been around for centuries and they are used in order for a person, a vehicle, or anything to make it from one side to the other. Bridges span across bodies of waters and even across land. People walk on bridges or use their cars for bridges. There are all types of bridges such as the beam bridge. The beam bridge is the simplest bridge of all. The beam bridge just consists of a large beam with piers at the bottom where it's attached to the abutment. The abutment is the sides where the beam is attached, basically to land most of the time. Beam bridges are not that strong, but the thing about a beam bridge, it is the least expensive to make. Beam bridges can't carry as much weight or handle the load as some other bridges like the suspension bridge. And we also have the truss bridge, which we are going to talk about today. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Michelle Gay Science Teacher, where it's all about science. So today guys, we are doing another STEM challenge. Our STEM challenge today is to make a truss bridge. But before we start, let's talk a little bit more about bridges. Bridges have to hold three types of load. The first load is a bridge must carry its own weight. It must be able to hold its weight so that it will not collapse under itself. Because if, the, if a bridge cannot carry its weight, it can't carry anything else. And if it collapses under its weight, that means that the construction of the bridge was not done well. Next, the bridge must be able to carry the load of other things, the load like cars and trucks. Like for instance, I have this cup of pennies. This bridge has to hold the load that we put on the bridge itself. So it should be able to hold the pennies. Now if I had both sides of this bridge completed, I wouldn't have to hold the bottom side, but we don't want to get on a bridge, whether we're walking or several cars driving across, and then the bridge suddenly collapses. No one wants that, so that's why the bridge must hold the load of other things. Next, a bridge must be able to carry the load from natural forces. For instance, it should be able to handle earthquakes because when an earthquake starts moving and the earth is shaking, bridges can collapse if they are not designed and built well because of the forces that are acting up on them. It must be able to withstand wind coming through it because wind can go up to 155 miles an hour in hurricane storms. And even in my area where we have hurricanes, they have bridges that have been wiped out before. So a bridge must be made to withstand those type forces. And even if you're living in an area where it's blizzards, a bridge must be able to withstand that. Okay, so those are the three types of loads a bridge must be able to withstand. We're talking about the truss bridge today. The truss bridge is a very unique bridge. When engineers designed the truss bridge, they designed it based on what we call trusses. Trusses are these triangular shapes that go in rows along the bridge with this beam on top. The good thing about a truss bridge is that the wind can blow through these trusses and that keeps it from collapsing and withstanding strong winds. They use this triangular shape because the triangular shape can withstand the compression and tension without buckling under. So even if I'm pressing it, it's not going to buckle under because of its triangular shape. The truss bridge can be used with a suspension bridge. 
you can add trusses to other bridges even the cantilever bridge and that way it makes it stronger well today your stem challenge is to design and build a truss bridge like engineers do remember engineers use the engineer and design process in order to make things that we use on a daily basis that is safe they engineer by coming up with the plan and then creating it and testing it out for us and then come up with the final product so let's talk about this process that you're going to go through today building a bridge now it's time to create when you begin to create or build your bridge keep in mind that you are not going to just bundle up your straws and wrap them around with tape you do not want to use all of your tape one time at one time you want to really think about you look at the base that you put on your paper and begin to take your tape and slowly put your bridge together now I'm showing you a bridge that I started and don't do the bridge that I just created. I want you to use your engineering design process and come up with yours because I'm not even sure if mine's going to hold up. When you make your bridge, you do want to leave a space in between so that you can put the cup of pennies in so that you can test out the weight. When you make your triangle, you just want to put your two straws together. You can tape them at the top and then tape them to the bottom of the base of your bridge. You need a beam at the top also to hold this part together to make it strong. It's very strong when I press on it. Compared to this side, it's not as strong because it doesn't have this beam at the top. So you need this. Now, I want to show you one more thing before you start. To make your straws longer, you're going to squeeze your straw at the tip and slide it in to the other straw to make it longer. That way, you don't have to take the two ends together because it's just going to make it weaker. All right, now that you have your challenge, I want you to begin the engineer and design process step one and begin to think about what you have to do. Then do your little research. After you research, then you're going to brainstorm, come up with some solutions. Once you come up with some solutions, pick that solution and draw it out. Once you draw it out, then get your materials and begin to build. Now, once you build it, it's time to test it out. So you're going to put it in between the span of some books or two chairs, and then you're going to take the weight and test it out. If your bridge begins to twist and turn, that means it's not strong enough. Now it's time to go back, look at your drawings and your ideas, and improve your bridge to make it stronger. That's the last part of the engineering design process. You don't need to redesign the entire thing, but make improvements. You may need to go back and tape in different areas. You may need to add tape somewhere else, or you may have put it too tight somewhere. But go back and look at your design and see what improvements you need to make. All right, so remember the truss bridge is a strong bridge because of its triangular shapes. And that's what makes it strong. 
Alright friends, I hope you like this engineer and design process and I hope you enjoy this STEM challenge. I wish I could be there to see how your bridges turn out because I know that they're going to be fantastic. Alright guys, have a wonderful day and I will see you next time on Michelle Gay Science Teacher.